Hi everyone. Well, I've been away for a while, but I have been busy. I have been slacking off. As you can see, this is my redesign Spot Micro, which I am christening today Spot Corgi, for reasons that you can see. Um, it's more compact than the Spot Micro. Got a rounder body, and it has a head and a tail that look like a Corgi. Um, now the redesign, as you can see, I've incorporated uh, space for um, four 18650 batteries at the top here. These are connected in two pairs of parallel, so um, the, the rated voltage output is 7.4, but I actually, when you read the output from these, I'm actually getting um, over 8 volts. <coughs> um, other things you'll notice are the shorter legs. These the legs are basically the only bit that remains from the original spot micro design. I don't want to say this is an all new design because it's inspired a great deal by the original spot micro design by KDY. Um, and if I turn this over, you'll be able to see the um, circuit boards are incorporated into the underside there. Uh, this is the power regulator, which, as I said before, you, you're getting over 8 volts from the um, the batteries, so that needs to be stepped down. This is the PCA 9685 controller, which is used to drive the servos. At the moment, it's being run off this Mega, because I had an issue with the Nano. The Nano is sits just in here, bolts onto the board there, and will connect straight into that. As I say, at the moment I'm running it off this Mega because I had a problem with the Nano. Um, so I turn that on, we might see... You'll see there, that's, that's 6 volts on the output. Um, if I switch to input... Oops, sorry, turned it off. Switch to input. Um, well, I'm getting just over 7 volts input, but that's with the servos running, so... I'll turn that off now, stop it thrashing around. Um, so that's the, the circuitry. This is quite a nice little um, controller. You just turn that little pot there to adjust the voltage out. And it seems to work quite well. Except, I think the problem I had with the Nano was I turned all the power on before I connected the output load. And I think it, uh, it doesn't like that. I think it puts out too much power. So you need to connect your output load before you turn the power onto the power controller. Um, other things I've redesigned, as I said previously, I removed the hip joints because I thought they were unnecessary and they just made things overly complicated. And I've replaced the hip joint with a, it was actually a bearing. It's a bit easier to see if I show you on this. Um, so that's the side panel. This bearing, which is a 15410, goes in there. The servo sits in there there's a little flange on the top of the servo you might be able to see there which actually sits inside of the bearing quite nicely and then the servo horn if i can find one um, goes in there and holds the thing together so that means uh, the screw into the servo and the bearing is actually holding that together rather than relying on glue as in the original model um, well, the bits and pieces, these are the revised end plates, which as you can see are quite a bit more compact than the previous one. This is the revised side panel. Uh, and of course there's the base panel. All those are essentially completely new parts, new designs. Um, so one thing I discovered, <laughs> as I'm discovering things as I go along, is that when these fit in together, the standard servo horn uh, it gone here? Oh, the wrong end um, the standard servo horn isn't deep enough to fully engage onto the servo with the bearing in place so what I'm doing at the moment is reprinting new servo horns that the boss here is uh, two millimeters taller just to allow that to engage fully onto the servo uh, but that's about it for the redesign. As I say, it's, it's essentially a completely new model except for the legs, which but they've also been shortened, so they're not standard either. Um, 
and that's about it for the redesign. I had hoped to have an actual running model to show you today, but as I said, this issue with the with the servo horns meant that the servos kept slipping out of alignment and it was making things a bit dodgy, so I decided not to do that. Um, the other thing I thought might be helpful for people starting out is to look at what is I considered essential equipment for your 3D printing lab. Now obviously you have the 3D printer, which is here, currently printing out my new servo horns. But also, I just collected a few things that I think are essential to have. One is the inevitable scraper, which comes with your 3D printer usually. Tweezers, picking up small pieces and picking bits out of things. Long nose pliers. Um, the vernier calipers, I think, are essential if you're doing redesigns, things like the servo horns. That was how I decided how much I needed to adjust those by, just by measuring there on the servo horn to say, okay, I need that to be a couple of millimetres taller. So the vernier calipers are, uh, I consider them are essential if you're doing original designs. Um, this, some of this stuff came from Aldi, so it's quite reasonably priced, not at all expensive. But the, and the Aldi stuff seems to be quite good quality. Um, that's Aldi as well, that's a, a little file, that actually comes in a set with um, your rat tail, triangular, various shaped files. Uh, the inevitable exacto knife for slicing your hands up with. Uh, uh, small screwdrivers with adjustable bits, so you can put in, for example, that's got an Allen key, and there's also a small flat blade there if I need that. And the other thing that's handy is a little hand drill bit like that, which makes it a lot easier for boring things out, rather than trying to either do it just with the drill bit by itself, or trying to get a, uh, a rotary drill together to, to um, drill out holes. Uh, other nice to have things are a, a little Dremel type tool like that. I've got an actual Dremel as well, but I'll just use this one in the workshop here. Um, a little handsaw. I'm going to be cutting any bits off or slicing things out. But, I mean, that's essentially it. Also, of course, the uh, multimeter for checking your voltages and connections and whatnot. Um, but other than that, that's about all you need to get started with the, the 3D printing workshop. Um, so that's where I'm up to. As I said, I had hoped to have a, a running demo of Spot Corgi. No pun intended. But, um, as always is the way, there's redesigns and new things to do, so that's where I'm at, but I thought I'd better just give an update on what's been going on. So if you have any questions or comments or criticisms, especially if you think I'm doing something silly, please let me know, because the whole purpose of this exercise is to learn. So um, I'm happy to hear any sort of comments or anything like that. I will probably put the chassis parts up onto Thingiverse uh, once I get them sorted out a bit more. I'm reasonably happy with how, how they all go together so uh, I think they are workable of course that comes with the caveat that you may need to do a little bit of filing and sanding to get things to go together but um, as I say I'll probably put the chassis parts up. Uh, the head and the tail are still to come obviously so um, it's going to be a work in progress, but uh, as I say, any comments, questions, criticisms, uh, jokes, please let me know. See ya.